Phil Chandler here and today I'm going to talk about an idea I've had uh, and there are no guarantees with my ideas as you know but it seemed to me that it would be possible to turn one of these uh, six frame nuke boxes with built-in feeders into uh, a mini queen castle. Now if you don't know what a queen castle is essentially it's a place to keep your breeder queen safe uh, give and give her space to lay onto frames that you provide for her so that you can then take those frames out and either graft from them or use them to put into your cell building colonies so that kind of thing but essentially it's there to look after your um, your breeder queen keep her safe and to stop her taking off and swarming off which obviously we don't want to do with her with a breeder queen. So um, this is the this is the box I'm going to use and the reason I'm going to use this type of box is because it has this which is a central divider. Now these are cunningly made boxes which the uh, the divider slots into comfortably into the middle there into pre-made um, what, what should we call them? Uh, well, let's call them a slot, actually. <laughs> it, it fits into slots in the hive, right? So it's completely bee tight. No bee can get from here to here. Uh, but each side of these, um, if, you if you use them like this, each side has three frames and its own entrance. There's an entrance here, entrance here, and that entrance services these three hives, that entrance is, uh, sorry, three frames. That entrance services these three frames. So, my thinking is that we could use this as a small queen castle by putting our breeder queen on this side, giving her the run of these three frames, which these are only frames with starter strips. In fact, I would give her um, frames with drawn comb to lay into. And on this side of the divider, we provide um, honey and pollen and we also allow the bees to fly in and out of this side. So this side would be behaving exactly like a normal colony with the exception that their queen is trapped behind the central divider and behind a queen excluder. So this, the, the, the modification I have to make is, which I've already partially done, is to put, is to mount this queen excluder inside this uh, divider uh, and fix it in place somehow um, and that's probably going to require some kind of adhesive tape I'm guessing. Um, it might be a good friction fit, I'm hoping it's a good friction fit because I've cut this as accurately as I can by hand. Um, so this piece of queen excluder should fit neatly in this hole which it pretty much does like that. Um, and I will find a way of keeping it in that place. But now it means that the queen can be kept on one side of this nuke box with the entrance closed. Optionally, you could have it on the queen excluder setting so that flying bees can get in but the queen can't get out. But I think I will prefer to have it on the ventilator setting and then have the entrance on this side open, fully open, so that flying bees can forage from here and replenish the stores in here. Obviously young bees can um, traverse this queen excluder and carry food through it to keep, the, uh, to, to keep the young bees on this side happy, to keep the larva fed and so forth. Um, and the queen would then be confined to the space here, which means we at all times know where she is uh, and it means that we can come in and give her um, extra frames of drawn comb and we can remove frames of eggs and larva which is what we need for our queen rearing. So that's the idea. Um, I've never seen it done in a six frame nuke. I've seen it done in full size brood boxes but I've never seen it done in this size uh, box. It's, a, it's an experiment. Um, it may or may not work, we'll see. Uh, but at the very worst, um, it will be a place where we can keep the breeder queen safe. I've just made this uh, rather lovely little queen excluder, or rather I've embedded this piece of queen excluder in the original Corex um, 
uh, divider board, shall we say, and now this can be inserted into the slot quite comfortably so, and that hopefully will provide a way of keeping our breeder queen safe behind it and the other bees have access to the other half um, with the entrance open. So there we go, let's test it. Hi, this is Phil Chandler, dressed up for a change and even with nitrile gloves on, look. Um, so what we're doing right now is some queen rearing and we've got our two breeder queens in uh, these cars queen castles which I've talked about um, earlier and the idea is that these six frame nukes are divided into two sets of three and the queen is kept on one side and um, there is a queen excluder in the divider itself so that there's bees both sides but the queen is kept one side without her an entrance this entrance is closed the queen's on this side uh, the other side has a normal entrance uh, at the front where the bees can come and go as they please and the bees can obviously get quit through the queen excluder but the queen herself is kept on this side of it and I'll show you what I mean. The reason I'm dressed up is actually nothing to do with this colony at all but we've got um, quite a lot of stroppy bees in the air at the moment because we've been doing other, other things so I'm just going to gently take this off. Now the other piece of equipment I need is a sushi mat of course. So this piece of equipment um, which I regard as essential now is a sushi mat which has been cut longitudinally lengthwise um, down the center to make two uh, roll-up mats which have uh, ventilation but no, obviously no bees can get through them and I'll show you how I use that in just a second. Carefully remove the lid in two stages just gently lift it fractionally and then take it off completely immediately have a quick look on here just in case the queen's up there I've never found her up there yet but you never know that's safely placed over there spray these guys down and the sushi mat goes over the side which the queen is not in and that closes that off completely we're only interested in this side at the moment and the reason for closing this side is that we don't want to accidentally drop the queen over there and have her run into the wrong side of the hive. So I'm just going to carefully remove this end frame. What we're looking for of course is uh, eggs and young larvae because we're, we're grafting today. This is all larvae but they are mostly too old. There are some in there that we could use. Yeah there's probably there's probably enough on both sides for us to use those. There's, there's larvae of um, a range of ages and here's our queen, here's our breed of queen with a red, red spot on her. So I've got to be careful not to take her with me and I'm carefully going to lift her up and just pop her back in on her side of the hive to make sure she's not on my glove yet. She's run down so we know we've got her so I'm going to shake these bees in. So the frame I've taken out has got eggs and larva on it and I'm going to replace it with an empty one so that the queen's got somewhere to lay. There we go. Now we can close this hive up knowing that the queen is safe on this side and she's got space to lay eggs which is the important thing for a queen.